Um, when I was shuffling the cards for you guys, some of the key important information that came out were the first word that I heard was parenting. The second is children. And the third is where is my career headed? Why is everybody making strides and, you know, going where they need to go except for me? So those are the three main things that we're going to touch on. So the first thing here is um, I do feel in terms of parenting, there are situations where I do sense um, if you have children, if you are co-parenting, if you have your own children, if you're sharing custody with other people's. Uh, with other people in your life, such as, you know, um, the, the mother or the father of the child or just co-parenting, having blended families and things like that, uh, there will be situations where the children are not getting along with each other or they're not getting along with the classmates, okay? So there's going to be a lot of communication regarding the children's behavior, their academic progress for some of you, their behavior at school, whether or not they're able to get along with uh, authority figures and their their peers, so there's going to be news about that and you're going to have to come in and work out a, a plan, work out some type of a disciplinary um, protocol or procedure to try to sort out the situation with children, okay? And I feel like that's for those with ch children 13 and younger. And then for, for those of you with older children, especially if they have flown the nest, they're going to be coming back into the picture. And there's going to be conversation and news and things like that about them that I feel might ruffle your feathers a little bit. You might not agree with the path that they're taking, either career, their academic progress, who they're choosing to marry. So either way, I feel like there's a little bit of discord, disagreements, and differences between the way that you envision them to be living their lives and the way that things are kind of like coming to your doorstep right now. And the bottom line is that, you know, people have to live their lives. And I feel for many of you, um, you've been keeping quiet. It's like, you feel almost like, I don't want to tell them. I don't want to upset the apple cart. I don't want them to, you know, resent me. I don't want them to feel like I'm not supporting them. But at the same time, you... This is a pattern, I feel, where you're really not uh, speaking up. The people that are coming to you, I, I feel like they're not only are they telling you these plans or these ideas that they have, they also want you to chime in. They also want your opinion. They want feedback. But you don't look at it that way. You think that, oh, they're just sharing because that's what they do. And you keep quiet and you don't offer any feedback. So my advice for you is, you know, this month, if they're coming to you and there is something that you feel, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right, or maybe I should, you know, offer some advice. I've been there. I've done that. Maybe I can offer them a word of wisdom. And please do, because it's coming to your doorstep for a reason. I'm a big, you know, um, advocate for... Things do happen in life for a reason. We encounter certain people, certain people come to us rather than others for a specific reason. It's because there is a sense of synchronicity, but also divine guidance that we're supposed to provide for each other. So something is coming to you and I feel like you're, you're dealing with somebody who's a little bit lost, who's a little bit confused, and you can be that, that voice of reason or that mentor in their lives, okay? Um, I do feel a lot of conversation with authority figures coming in, like figuring very prominently this month. And uh, it could even be, you know, um, parent-teacher conferences, um, educators, counselors, community advocates as well. And I feel like it stems around children. It stems around um it stems around, you know, finding resources in order to address behavioral problems or finding resources to help children overall. Um, even for those of you who are, you know, Piscean male who are watching this, I definitely feel as well there is a sense here of, um, it's like nostalgia, walking down memory lane, having a lot of, um, ha having, uh, I feel, dreams about, you know, your mom, your dad, um, things like deja vu moments where you feel like, oh, 
now I know why mom did that or dad did that. And I feel like there's going to be this wave of emotion coming back or things coming full circle for many of you where you're thinking heavily about your childhood. You're thinking about what happened the first time. How did I behave? And it's almost like you're getting a do-over and you have to really, you know, it's, it's not often we get a do-over. So you have to really think about what I, did I do the last time? And, you know, what happened as a result of it? And what can I do differently now? So you, you're going to do need to do some heavy digging. Um, Pisces, I feel like for many of you, emotionally, it's a little bit overwhelming this month. And so you want to self-indulge, you know, you want to indulge a little bit. You want to kind of like, you know, cast your worries and your obligations aside and you want to let your hair down. You want to enjoy the moment. But it just feels to me like there's a lot of things that you need to deal with, first of all, emotionally, and, and then also on the practical front, taking care of yourself, maintaining yourself, maintaining the household, making sure that everyone is where they need to be, making sure that everything is um, solid and organized and clean and, and, you know, systematic. So I feel like you want to take that moment to indulge, but the circumstances surrounding you will not allow you to do so. And so it's really important when you find downtime to take care of things in a timely manner rather than um, trying to, I want to say, rather than, you know, um, telling yourself, oh, there's time for it in the future. So procrastination is really not, you know, in your favor for this month, okay? And a lot of the times too, you know, we want a moment to kind of like recoup, but things come in at inopportune times, as well as opportunities coming in for you when you're not really ready. So I do see a lot of hesitation here from your end. So the major theme here is aim to be a lot more disciplined, taking care of your responsibilities. And if you find yourself like, you know, getting into this rut where you're like, I can do it another day, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it next week. I feel like these are negative, you know, self-talks that you're telling yourself that will really reinforce that procrastinating energy and it's not going to be good for you, okay? So the second message that um, I mentioned as well um, has to do more with, you know, where is my career headed? Um, I feel for many of you, there you're... It's like you're thinking ahead, you're thinking further down the line, and I'm seeing here the fall, okay? So the, the fall. So I don't know if this is like literally the, the fall season, like the autumn season, where there's going to be massive expenditures. For whatever reason, you're, you're already planning for it, and you're already encountering it, or you're expecting it, and you're not too, you're a little bit nervous about this. And then for others of you, they mentioned the fall. So I don't know if there has been any type of health issues related to fractures, fall, accidents, and things like that, or health issues that um, are created because of some type of, they say splintering fractures. So I'm, I'm seeing here, you know, maybe falling. So these are expenditures as well. So possibly needing surgery, possibly needing some type of a medical procedure in the autumn time frame, and you're already kind of nervous about whether or not um, you're up for it. Okay, so that's what I'm, I'm feeling here. And there is this planning that needs to happen from your end. So if you are stressed out about it, the the only thing I can tell you is, you know, yes, it sucks, but... The only thing that you have control over right now is you have to plan for it. You have to, you know, lay out some type of a solid groundwork for you um, because ignoring it doesn't make it go away. OK, and then um, sweeping it under the rug, it tend, things tend to implode. And if you're dwelling on it, but not really taking, you know, pen and paper and figuring out a logical plan for yourself, it's also not going to be helpful. So my advice here is we need to take care of these practical things, okay? Um, third message, what I'm feeling here is um, going back to the career, you know, where am I headed? Why is everybody around me making solid uh, consistent progress, but it seems like you're turning your wheels. So I feel like for many of you, 
Some of you, there, there are three groups that I'm seeing here. Some of you retired. You have a lot of ideas swirling around you. And you feel like, you know, I want to get people that are like-minded, that can get on board with me. So I see you coming up with these ideas, but I don't see you making those connections. And you're trying to figure out, where's my clan? Where's my tribe? Where are all these people that are going to be supportive or receptive to these plans so that we can move forward? So I feel like the people around you, they're at a point where they themselves are retired. They don't really want to manage anything. They feel a little bit um, they just want to enjoy their life in a very passive manner. So they don't really want to take the mantle to do anything big, to get involved in, you know, complicated, complex, or overreaching, um, like, big projects. So it's hard finding that community of people. And then I also feel the second group of you guys, like, mid-career. Things are stable, but you're just like, I don't really know how stable it's going to be. Is this company going to, you know, expand over time or are they shrinking or are they um, regressing? So there's some uncertainty here. Do I jump into another work situation or do I stay here? And then you're also looking around. You're looking at your friends. You're looking at, you know, um, the people around you and everyone seems like they're progressing with their lives. They're getting advancements. They're getting into the career that really makes them feel you know, elated. And um, I'm also feeling for many of you, you have family members, you have people around you that are very high power professional. They might be politicians, they might be, you know, doctors, lawyers, architects, they may have a lot of education under their belt, and you're comparing yourself with them. So the only thing here is, um, you know, focus your energy, focus on what it is that you're doing, or if you'd like some guidance, you can definitely go to these people around you and just, you know, ask them, can I have five minutes of your time to pick your brain? Because you're a really successful person and I, I just want to know how you got where you got, uh, how you got where you are today and what you did and, you know, what are the steps that you took so that I can understand how I want to proceed with my own professional development. So I feel like it's important to connect with people that you admire or people that you feel has made it because they're going to tell you things that, you know, that you wouldn't imagine, you, you couldn't imagine. So what you see in terms of their professional success is it's a veneer. There is struggle. There's a lot of discipline. There's a lot of planning that goes behind the scenes that nobody else sees. So they're going to tell you snippets of that. They're going to tell you those stories, those long nights, those moments where they want to give up, but they soldier on because they know how to focus and harness their energy so that they're not um, operating from, you know, self-fulfilling prophecies and, and negative self-talk and, and things like that. So they're operating more from harnessing their energy, focusing their energy, and planning, okay? So you're going to get a lot of guidance and a lot of uh, food for thought from these people around you. So I feel like that's really going to be helpful for your professional life, and it's going to help you kind of map out where you need to go and what you need to do and realistically what you need to focus on. Okay, I'm seeing, and this is weird, I'm seeing a water sign, water sign dichotomy or dynamics, a uh, dual. So you might be in a relationship here with a water sign. And um, so it could be, you know, another Pisces or Scorpio or a Cancer. So I feel like that could also be, you know, sun, moon, arising. So I'm feeling like you're in a relationship with them. And it seems as if they're they're saying like geographically apart it's hard for the two of you to come together for whatever reason it could be long distance it could be you know uh you both are working odd hours it could be just timing it could be family as well like you know children getting in the way family getting in the way so i'm feeling a water sign water sign couple and um, I'm feeling as well that, you know, one person has made it. The career is going really, really well. The other person is really, really struggling. And you're trying to do a lot of family planning. When do we have kids? When do I take maternity leave? You know, um, 
do one of us stay home or do we both work? So I feel like you're trying to do these uh, family planning, you know, discuss, you're trying to have these family planning discussions. And it seems as if the only factor that is holding you back is that f um, professionally and financially, one partner is not as stable, okay? Um, planning, you're, you're going to need to plan things out. And I feel like for you guys, the, the, you know, the, the pressure has to be on for you guys to change direction. So I feel like this is what's happening now. You're right on the cusp of changing direction. So right now, everything feels a little bit uncertain and it feels a little bit scary. I see your heart beating a little bit faster, but after the change, after you have committed yourself and have told yourself and, you know, accepted the fact that things are changing, I made a conscious decision to change things, then I feel it's going to get a lot better, okay? You just have to come to terms with the fact that change is here, I've embraced it, and now let's welcome the new things, okay? So I feel like emotionally, um, you're not really caught up yet to where you are physically, but you will get there, okay, Pisces? Um, I guess the last message um, that I want to bring up here is they say choices are dwindling, okay? And I feel like this is uh, applicable to your career sector. If you're not happy with it anymore, I feel like there are more um, job offers that will be on the table for you, but you're going to need to change direction. You need to be the one to kind of like tell yourself, you know, I'm not happy here anymore. What else is there? And then go and pursue that, okay? I know it's easier said than done, but I actually feel like there's a lot of abundance that are made available for you in your environment, okay? Um, on top of that, and they say like, you know, choices are dwindling. I have here a fire sign, water sign relationship. So it could be you guys dating a fire sign. Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And uh, what I have here is the Knight of Wands and the Ten of Swords. So I feel like this person is uh, leaving your life, okay? They're, they're, they're removing themselves from the picture. They have move on, moved on. And there is geographical location, uh, I'm sorry, geographical distance between the two of you. So I feel like they've, they've moved on. Um, so Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, if this is somebody that is still, you know, they're, they're kind of like, um, in and out of your life, there is still lingering attachment. There is still assets, uh, finances, children, even, or whatever the situation might be, is not coming back together. Okay. So I feel like their exit is very final and it is something that you need to kind of accept and embrace and just kind of relinquish control over because this is, I feel, the the, the chemistry and the dynamics between the two of you, it's very uh, tumultuous. It's very passionate, very tumultuous, but very unstable. So let this one go, okay? Um Aside from that, I feel that, you know, the going into your birthday time, unfortunately, um, we are also experiencing a Mercury retrograde as well. And um, what it is doing for you guys, I feel, is emotionally is trying to get you to catch up to where you are physically. Many of you have are, are, are experiencing things, changes with your physical body. And it could be pregnancy, it could be, you know, a, a, a dip in your hormonal level. There is some physical displacement that I feel happening. So I feel like many of you are either in a new environment and you're trying to, you know, begin again. And then emotionally, you're still very much stuck in the past. You're still thinking about, you know, I should have done this, I should have done that, I should have said this to this person, I should not have, you know... Um, stayed in, in it for so long with that person. So I feel like emotionally you're still uh, stuck in the past. You're still dwelling and you're still like lost in nostalgia. Whereas physically you're somewhere new and you need to kind of pull your emotions forward in order for you to kind of like be emotionally available and present where you are right now so that you can make the most of it. And so the Mercury retrograde period coming on the 23rd, what it's doing 
is that is really telling you, you know, are you really ready? You say you're ready, but you've been like mulling over things from the past. So are you ready? And we're going to give you this one last test to make sure you're ready. So you're going to start to feel things coming back from the past. And if you tell yourself you're really ready, you're able to leave it behind, then whatever is coming back in from the past should not affect you emotionally. Okay. Uh, Mercury uh, retrograde cycles are very good for planning okay it's not like planning what you're going to do but really thinking about and sitting down and you know regrouping your thoughts figuring out what have I learned and what do I need to you know do next it's a good time for going inwards introspection it's a good time for you to figure out what your next few steps are. Don't act on anything because things can change, but it's a good time to really kind of like pull things together and ask yourself, what have I learned from all of this? And how is this making me a better person? And what lessons, you know, have I fully embodied so that the same scenarios don't happen for me in the future? Okay, so Pisces, you've got a lot of work cut out for you. It seems to me to be a busy month, so make sure you, you know, get plenty of rest and make sure that you keep moving forward, okay? Emotionally, um, focus on the moment. And the easiest way I found to do that is when you are, for example, if you're commuting to work, if you're taking the bus or if you're driving in your car, listen to the radio and really immerse yourself in what is being said. And I usually listening to the radio, listening to current events, listening to something that can really ground you in that specific moment in time, rather than letting your mind drift into the past, is going to be very helpful, okay? And on top of that, it also expands your knowledge base. And just kind of like, if you go through the workday, remind yourself, what am I doing now? How am I feeling now? And to really help ground yourself in that moment. And if you find yourself, you know, throughout... This month, if you find yourself very frazzled, if you find yourself kind of stressed out, take a moment and sit down, just, you know, breathe and then ask yourself, what am I feeling now? And respond to yourself. I'm feeling frazzled. I'm feeling stressed out. I'm feeling like I'm pulled in many directions. And then ask yourself, what do I need to do first? So that you can really collect your thoughts and then you can ground yourself in that moment, okay? It's going to be very helpful and uh, I feel like, you know, this is something good for us to do during Mercury retrograde because our thoughts are confused. Uh, we're walking around in a fog and it's really important to remind ourselves emotionally and also physically, what am I feeling right now and what do I need to focus on right now? What do I need to do right now? What are the things that are outside of my control? versus what are the things that are within my control that I can change right now. So that's a really good exercise to kind of keep yourself grounded and keep yourself, you know, stress-free, okay?